It's the most significant event in the history of humankind, the crucifixion of Jesus. Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. On a Good Friday, with deep sorrow and mourning, we come here to remember his suffering. But it is also a day of immense hope and salvation. He was betrayed, arrested, and sentenced to death, all for the sake of humanity's salvation. He endured physical torture and humiliation and the weight of the world's sins on his shoulders. The cross that he carries was heavy, but his love for us was even heavier. The crucifixion of Jesus is not just a historical event. It is a personal event for each of us, a reminder of God's immense love for each of us. He loved us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. This love is unconditional and it surpasses all human understanding. It is the love that saves us from our sins and grants us eternal life. This glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will play. Watch 
cherish the old ragged cross till my troth is at last I lay down. I will cling to the old ragged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ was lifted up high on the cross, might draw the whole world to himself. Grant that we who glory in his death for our salvation may also glory in his call to take up our own crosses and follow him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Christ bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we may die to sin and live to righteousness. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you, the praises of Israel, are in throne in holiness. You knew our forebears trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cry and were saved. He knew they trusted and were not disappointed. That I am a worm and not human. Soon by others and despised by the people. All who seek me mark, mark at me. They mock mouth at me. They wag their heads. He committed his cause to the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let the Lord rescue him. For the Lord delight in him. That it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe upon my mother's breast. Upon you I can cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, look with mercy on your church, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, and to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 1 through 12. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered them him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before it shares, shares is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who, is gen who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, through, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made 
intercession for the transgressors. When I survey the Gospel chapter 18 verses 12 through 27. A, det a detachment of soldiers with his, com his commander and the Jewish official arrested Jesus. They bound him and, and brought him first to Ananias, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and other disciples were following Jesus because, the, because this disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to, to the high priest came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of the, these men, they just, a, this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I'm not. It was cold, and the servants and the officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest cursed, questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews came come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him on, in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I, if I said anything, something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Ananias sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was standing there warming himself. So they asked him, You are one of his, his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I'm not. Once the high priest's servant, a relative of the man who either Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt, and our own Calvary's mount of gold. There with the blood of 
that will pardon and cleanse me Gospel, chapter 18, verses 28 through 40. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate, turned, Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone. They objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus has said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed over you to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. 
Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. John chapter 19 verses 1 through 16. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flagged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and, and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When, when Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and the officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from, he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you have no power over me if it was not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of the greatest sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jewish leaders kept shouting, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opted Caesar. Opposed to Caesar. When, when, when Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the Georgia, Georgia, Georgia seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in the Arabic was Gabata. Gabata. It was the day of preparation of the Passover, and it was about noon. Here's your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, Take him away, take him away. Crucify him. Should, should I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar. The chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Let's distinguish the next ten. In the o sinless son of God, we weep as we consider how you took on our sins. You carried our sorrows. You were pierced for our iniquities. You accepted the punishment that brought us peace. And you received the wounds through which we are healed. We surrender our lives at the foot of the cross tonight. Have mercy upon us, we pray. Amen. John 19, 17 through 24. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull called Golgotha. They, they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. He read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests and the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write, the King of the Jews, but this man claimed to be the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let us decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them, and cast lots for my garments. So this is what the soldiers did. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from a man's and sinners blood beneath that blood to solve the guilty state. Beneath that blood, lose all the guilty stain. The dying thief 
rejoice to see that fountain in his pain. And there may I do wine a sea, wash all my sins away. Look all my sins away, wash all my sins away. And there may I well want to see, wash all my sins away. Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power. Or the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. Till the ransom of God. John chapter 19, verses 25 through 30. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Caiaphas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciples whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciples, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home, later knowing that everything that has now been finished, so that the scripture will be fulfilled. Jesus says, I'm thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lip. So when he had received his drink, Jesus says, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Next. We'll sing one and four. One and four. Jesus keeps me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all the healing stream, flows from Calvary's Chapter 19, verses 31 through 42. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath, because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have take, uh, the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it was, uh, 
has given testimony and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen to that happen so that the scripture will be fulfilled. No one of his bone, none of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. When Pilate's permission, with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a tomb, in which no one has ever been laid, because it was a Jewish holiday of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Dear friends, this is the starkest night of human history where the Son of God, the Son of Righteousness, was put to death on a horrible cross. He suffered for our sins, for the sins of this world. And he forsake himself so that we will not be forsaken by God. When we feel paralyzed by fears and doubts in our minds, remember that Jesus has already gone through that. God has given his son Jesus Christ for this world to die for us so that we could be called the children of God. He bore our sins on his body when he took the stripes on his body so that we could be healed. So tonight is a night of remembrance of the suffering of Christ, not only for our own personal sin but the whole world, the sinless Son of God, this world. So we don't have to be afraid of sin and death anymore. That we have an eternal life that we will be spending eternity with God. Thanks be to God for that. We will sing one, two, and five. One, two, and five.
Jesus Christ who was and is God did not consider himself to be God rather humbled himself by taking the nature of a servant became a human being and gave himself up for death even death on a cross he suffered the physical pain of torture and death he suffered the mental pain of humiliation and mocking through the streets of jerusalem he was dragged and the griefs leaving his disciples and dear ones he suffered the spiritual pain by experience the feeling of rejection by his father as he hung on the cross when the sun refused to shine jesus christ is always our example and guide for overcoming the pains of our lives physically mentally and spiritually so let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of god he has given us rest by his sorrow and life by his death go in peace may the one who borne the pains for our our sins be your comfort in our pains may his presence be with you in grief and loneliness and may his peace abide and keep you during this night and forever amen